Hi, my name is Andy, and this is a video about uh, rest. It's the second video about rest in the series. The first one just talked about what uh, rest APIs are, which are basically kind of web web friendly, uh, like doing the web how it should be, uh, ways of accessing resources uh, and manipulating resources um, uh, on a server. I'm only looking at web rest APIs. Theoretically, there are other kinds. Uh, so this time we're going to uh, make a very small uh, REST API. And the, the API that we make is going to serve as an example. Um, when we add features and so on later, um, it'll be, we'll be changing this code. So it's, it's important that you have a quick uh, browse through the code that we've got, uh, even though probably it won't contain many surprises um, if you understood uh, the previous video, which is entitled, What is REST? Okay, so I'll take you through the plan. I'll show you how to use the API, which is going to be the main part of this, just to drive home uh, the concepts about how REST APIs work. We'll have a quick look at the code and the different layers of code. Uh, and then you can see where to uh, find out more. So first of all, the plan is this. We're going to make a kind of a YouTube, but for poems. Um, and the way we're going to approach it is we're going to uh, work on an API get the functionality up and running, and then the website's going to be built on top of um, uh, the functions in the API. In order to, uh, to build the API, the main technology we're going to use is JSON. Um, so stuff we send to the server will be JSON, stuff we get back from the server will be JSON. And the technology that we're going to use um, to write the code is Python and the Python library called web.py, which is um, basically very simple little bit of Python that lets you just write straightforward code that sends back um, a web requests to strings and it all it gets out of our way and lets us just think about rest okay so um, how to use the API first thing that we're going to want to do is list what poems are available um, so uh, in order to show you how to use the API I'm going to be showing examples using a program called curl so um, what's written at the top of the screen there is what you would type in if you were using the program curl. Uh, on Linux you'll have that program already. On Windows you probably have to go and find it somewhere. Uh, but it's a command line program that where you type in uh, the, the web request that you want to send and then it prints out the response that you got. So here the, the little dollar means we're going to start typing. And then what we typed in is curl and then this URL. So the um, the AP, the 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 REST API that I've written is running. It's running on this machine. So HTTP localhost means um, go to this machine. And it's running on port 8080. So all of that is kind of irrelevant. And then the interesting bit uh, is the rest of it starting with slash API. So I've, I've wrapped it onto two lines, but really you would type this as one line if you were typing it. So you would get rid of that backslash, which means start a new line, and then you would type the rest. Uh, so the the interesting bit of the URL is slash API slash v1 slash poems. So what I've chosen to do is I've chosen to put our REST API, uh, everything to do with our REST API, uh, in, in URLs that start with slash API. And then I've chosen one of the possible ways of indicating what version of the API you're using. The, ver the, the way that I've chosen is to put uh, v1 as part of the URL. Um, so when we make changes to this API um, in incompatible ways, uh, we'll put the change version under v2 and so on and so on. Um, so that slash API slash v1 you're going to see in all of the uh, URLs we look at today. And you're also going to see the next bit which is poems, because the only stuff that we've got in this API at the moment is poems. And the normal way in a REST API that you go and get a list of all the stuff that's there is you give the name of the collection uh, and then nothing after it. So here we've said just poems, uh, and we're doing a get because curl. Um, when you when you just give it a URL like this, it, it knows to do a get. So it does a get that goes to um, the API that I've written, and the response that we get back is shown below, which is basically a little bit of JSON. It's a JSON array containing the IDs of all the poems in the system. Uh, and in this test system, there are only two poems in the system. And those are their IDs. This is a photo and a question. Uh, so that's how you list poems. 
Um, if you want to get hold of an individual poem, the, the URL looks pretty similar. But instead of stopping at poems, we've got a slash and then an ID. And the ID is one of those IDs from um, the previous page that we got back. So this REST API is hopefully browsable in the sense that um, once you know that poems URL, you can ask for that and get a list of IDs. And once you've got IDs, you can then find poems in this way. So we're doing a curl and then the URL and we put nothing else. So curl still knows that it's doing a get. And the response that we get back is a JSON object. And the JSON object contains uh, properties called text. And the text contains the actual poem. You can see it's got slash ends there for new lines. So in our website, we'll display them uh, as new lines. But here in the JSON, uh, it's just encoded as slash n. Um, then it's got a title uh, and it's got an author. Uh, and that's all there is to a poem. Oh, it's got an ID as well. Let's move me out of the way for a second. Um, so it's got a title and an ID, uh, which is the same ID that we asked for. And the author, Robert Frost. Uh, okay, so that's how you get a poem. So that's again using get. So there's two ways of using get. One to get a list, one to get an individual object. And that's the normal way that you um, would work with things in REST APIs. Right, notice, as, as I was saying in the last video, it's all about resources. So the only things we can do are look at collections of resources, get hold of resources. So let's see what's next. So the next thing we can do, we might want to do is add a poem. So here we've got slightly more complicated curl command. Um, so we say curl, and then that backslash just means uh, I had to go into a new line because I can't fit on the slide. So if you get rid of the backslash and put all of this on one line, it should work for you. Um, and we're using minus minus data, and then a single quote, and then a load of stuff, and then a closed single quote. Uh, and that's the way, in curl, we provide data that we want to send uh, along with our URL. And curl knows, when you provide data like that, that it should be a post, not a get. So now we know uh, we're using post. And um, the in, the information that we provide in data is going to be the whole of a poem. Now I've I've put a dot 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 there because I couldn't fit it all in. But basically we've got a curly bracket uh, for a JSON object and a whole load of properties. So that'll be again title, author, and text uh, with the actual details of the poem in. Um, close the curly bracket. Close the single quote, and our data's finished. And then the URL that we use to add a new poem is the same one that we saw initially. It's the name of the collection, which is just poems. And what our API sends back to you, if you do a post like this, is it sends back the ID of the object that it added. So we don't get to decide what that ID is. Um, the system sends you back the ID. In this case, it's chosen an ID of foo, uh, which you'll see is the same as the title, but all lowercase. And what, what the system actually does is it looks at your title and chooses an appropriate ID that's unique. Uh, based on the title that you give it. So that's how you add a new poem, using post. If you want to completely replace a poem that's already there, um, the way REST APIs support completely replacing something that's already there is with put. So in order to do that, we tell curl explicitly, this is not a get or a post, this is a put. The way we do that is we say minus minus request put. Uh, then I provide all the data similarly to um, the previous page well, we were adding a new poem here, we're replacing a poem with an ID that we already know. And because we already know the ID, um, we we put it into the URL. So if you look at the, the end of the URL, now it says slash poems slash foo. So put is for replacing something that's already there that you already have the URL for. Um, and it's for completely replacing something, not modifying it. So a lot of APIs use put uh, to modify something that's already there. So you only provide some information to say this has changed. That's not the, the absolute right way to do things. Uh, if you're in a system that allows you, you should use patch for that. You should use put for completely replacing something, uh, which is what we're doing here. Um, other things you might want to do, you might want to delete a poem. So again, um, we have to say minus minus request delete to let curl know what uh, request type we want to use. Uh, and then we just give the URL, it's just the URL of the poem we want to delete. So in this case, it's that foo poem again that we just created. Uh, in the case of put and then delete, uh, uh, an empty string comes back from the system, just so that you know it worked. 
Um, and if you want to uh, modify a poem that's already there, but you don't want to give all the details of it, you just want to change one of the parts of it, you can use request. You can use patch. So you say minus minus request patch. Uh, and then minus minus data contains a JSON object that just has some stuff in it. So in this case, it only has text. It doesn't have title or author. And similarly, you could just have title or just have author if you wanted to modify it. Um, and again, for that, you need to provide the proper URL uh, with the ID of the poem here, which in this case, I'm modifying the a question poem. So that's the way you use um, this REST API. Um, uh, and if you follow the link to the blog, you can get... Uh, you can get the GitHub URL um, of where this system, of where I'm working on this system, so you can look at the, the real details of how it works. In a sec, we'll look at um, kind of an overview of how it works. But um, just note at this point, all the uh, URLs are used to identify the thing that you're working with. So in each of these cases, we're either working with the poems collection, because we want to list what's in it, or we want to add something to it, or we're working with an individual poem, in which case we use the URL, which is its, its ID which contains its ID. Okay, so um, how the code is structured is like this, and I'm already not completely sure this is absolutely right, so we may see changes um, over the next few months. Um, but basically, there's a layer which is just the um, stuff you need to get to write an app in web.py. Uh, there's a layer which handles HTTP stuff. There's a layer which handles uh, dealing with JSON, so theoretically we might have similar layer that deals with some kind of XML representation or something else. And then there's a layer which deals with actual functionality. So actually going and getting stuff from a database and putting it back and so on. So let's start with the web.py app. So in order to make a web.py app, you have to make um, an app object and things like that. And the most interesting part of that layer is this URLs part. Well, basically, we specify um, uh, a regular expression that matches a URL. So basically that top bit that says slash API slash v1 slash poems and then the stuff in brackets is basically saying anything that starts with poems and then has some stuff that we want, that we care about. So that bracket dot star bracket means um, capture, capture everything after this and pass it on to us. So anytime you see um, the system uh, uh, gets access via a URL that looks like that, then send it to this piece of Python code, and the, that piece of Python code is the bit in red. Um, so I've made um, a bit of code, a class called poems, which is in the package poemtube.api.v1. Um, uh, and then it's in a file called poems, but the class, uh, file called poems with a lowercase p, but the class has got an uppercase p using the standard Python module system to make that work. Um, and uh, by the way, where I've highlighted stuff in red, that means that's the bit where we go down to the layer down below. So in a second, we'll have a look at that poems class. Just before we do anything else, any other URLs um, uh, that match the expression below, which in this case is just a slash, will go to a different Python class called poemtube.site.home. At the moment, that's just a placeholder that uh, that says, I haven't written the website yet, but that is where the website will go. So anything under slash API goes to the API, and stuff under slash eventually will go to the, the website for people using looking at this stuff through a web browser rather than through curl. Okay, so anyway, the point is, you have to tell web.py, uh, based on the URL, what bit of code you're going to run. And the bit of code we're interested in is this poems class inside the API stuff. So let's have a look at poems.py. Um, so basically, we import from the JSON layer, something called JSON poems, and then we have a class called poems, and it has methods called things like get, put, post, patch, delete. Um, and that's the way web.py handles um, the different types of requests. So um, you have a method for each type of request that you want to support. In this case, I'm only showing you get, but the other ones are similar. So basically, uh, get takes the self-argument, which is the normal thing in Python to say, uh, here you are, it's like this in uh, Java or C++. Um, and the first thing that we do in this HTTP layer is, uh, later on, we're going to decide whether we're doing JSON or some other type of content. At the moment, the only type we support is JSON. So what we immediately do inside get 
is we, we call web.header and we say the content type is JSON. That's what that application slash JSON means. Now you may think that ought to live in the JSON layer. The reason I've put that in the HTTP layer is because it's um, it's an HTTP thing and the JSON layer doesn't know anything about HTTP, so I'll put it in here. Not certain that's right, but uh, maybe it is. Uh, once we've set the header to say the stuff coming back to you, the client, is JSON, uh, we then just call into the JSON layer. And what we do is we call jsonpoems.get, so that's in red because we're going to look at that in more detail in a second. And what we pass in is uh, an object representing the database. At the moment, that's just a fake database. Um, and the URL, the, the ID that was given to us, which is the bit after poems in the URL, um, we're calling a function called clean, which just um, tidies that up so that it looks like uh, one of our unique IDs. In fact, what that does at the moment is just strips the leading slash off, because there could be a slash at the beginning of that. Um, in future, that may do other things. Um, it's possible someone might even try and inject some kind of code into our stuff through that ID, and we might need to think about that. Anyway, point is, the HTTP there basically just says uh, you're going to get back JSON, and then it calls the JSON layer. And here's the JSON layer. The JSON layer um, gets hold of some functions from the functionality layer, so where it imports list poems and get poem, that's uh, those stuff from the functionality layer that we're going to look at in a minute. So the JSON layer also has a method called get, which you saw being called uh, on the previous page. Uh, and the get method here takes in a database object, which it just passes on, and the ID, which you saw was cleaned before. So now we've got two options. If the ID is completely blank, um, because you've asked for absolutely nothing at all, then we're going to call list poems, pass in the database, and then once the answer comes back from list poems, we're going to use uh, json.dumps uh, to convert that answer into json. So basically, list poems returns a map, a set of keys and values. In fact, no, it returns an array, which is just a list of IDs, a, a, a Python array. So json.dumps, which is a, a Python built-in piece of functionality, turns that array into a, a json string, which is suitable then to get returned by the HTTP layer. Um, if the ID was not the empty string, we go into the else part. Uh, in the else part, we, we call get poem. Uh, in this case, we pass in the database object that we've been given and, and the ID. Uh, and then the answer will come back as a JSON object. So a JSON map. Sorry. The answer will come back as a Python map. And we pass that into json.dumps. And that will turn that into a string which starts with a curly bracket and so on. Um, it looks like JSON. Uh, so the two red things are the bits we're going to look at now, uh, pieces of functionality. This JSON there is basically responsible for uh, turning stuff that the user gave to us from JSON into a Python object, uh, and turning the answer we get back from the functionality layer back into a JSON string. So I think we've got an example of post. Yeah, here's post. Um, so this is another function in the same uh, in the same module as the one we just looked at. This deals with posts. Uh, and the reason I've included that is because this is going to contain, this is going to deal with data that came from the user. So in this case, we, the arguments we pass into this function are the DB, for, which is the database, and the data that came from the user. So at the moment, that's a string, as we saw in our curl commands. It was just open quote and then some stuff and then close quote. So that data um, is a string. So what we do is we use the json.loads function to turn that string into a Python map. Once we've got the Python map, uh, in that bottom bit where we're calling add poem, we're getting the details out of that Python map. So D brackets title, D brackets author, D brackets text. So we're getting the information out of D, uh, which is this map that was got from the JSON, and passing it to the add poem function. So the add poem function takes in the database, uh, and it's going to add a poem to that database with this title, author, and text. Um, and once add poem has finished doing its work, it will pass back the ID, and we turn that ID back into JSON by using json.dumps. So you can see this JSON layer basically just um, takes in information that came in via a web request and turns it into JSON, or sorry, treats it as JSON, turns it into Python objects, um, calls a function in the real functionality layer, in this case add poem, and then any response that comes back, it turns back into a JSON string. So it's just a JSON handling layer. 
Um, and I'm wondering whether this should be a layer, maybe this should be um, a kind of a utility that sits off to the side, so I may, fi I may change that in the future. Um, and then finally we've got the functionality layer. Um, so the list poems function is in a module called listpoems.py um, and as we saw list poems only takes in the database and this will get more complicated so, so at some point we'll be trying to filter the poems that we get back we may want more information than just the ID um, uh, we may do paging and things like that so this, this may be an area where we're going to do some work but for the moment it's quite simple um, and it just uses the um, the standard Python way, it returns an iterator through um, poems. Does it return an iterator? It returns something that you can use to get a list of all the poems in the database. Um, and the, the way we're using the database here is we're assuming that this database has an object in it called poems uh, and that that object can be treated like a map. So in this case we can iterate, we can say for id in db.poems and we know that we'll get all the IDs out. Um, th at the moment that database is implemented as just a Python map but in future it will be a, a CouchDB database or something like that and you can also with the Python CouchDB library you can treat a CouchDB database as if it's just a Python map so the, this code should work reasonably unmodified uh, once we're using CouchDB and this code doesn't know whether this DB object or db.poems doesn't know whether it's a CouchDB database or what it is. Uh, <coughs> it just iterates through it. So that's how list poems work. It just uh, it just gives you back all the IDs. Um, and here's how get poem works. So get poem has to go and get the poem with the ID we want. So we've been given a db object and an ID. So we the first thing we do is we do the red bit. We go and look in the db.poems object. We ask for the thing with that ID. What we then do is we we take a copy of that. We don't want to modify the one in the database, so we take a copy, and then we stick the ID into it. So at the moment, the database itself already knows the ID because it's there, um, but we want our return value to contain that ID just to make it easier for the person using it uh, to know what they're getting back. So we make a new property inside this ANS object called ID, put the ID in there, and then return that. As we saw before, then the JSON layer then turns that into JSON. At the moment, this is a Python map. So the date, what we're saying here is that the database object db.poems uh, is a map of ID to another map, and that map contains the details of the poem, which is things like title, author. Uh, and here is add poem. Uh, so add poem has to make up an ID. So that line that says ID equals make ID, it uses the title. It passes in the database as well, so that we can make sure that the title, the ID we're making, is unique. Once it's made an ID, it's all really quite straightforward. It takes in a title, an author, and the text, and it inserts into the database by just saying db.poems brackets ID equals, uh, and then the object that it wants to store in there. So databases like CouchDB, MongoDB, um, instead of using SQL or something like that to put stuff in them, you can just provide um, a JSON object, uh, or in this case a map, which it gets treated as a JSON object eventually, um, to uh, to that database and it will just store it under an ID for you. So going and getting something from the database is just a matter of asking for that ID and making a new thing is just a matter of supplying the ID like we're doing here. Notice that there's a potential race condition here. If we make an ID and someone else makes an identical ID um, and, and we both, uh, we, two, two threads are working at the same time, both make an ID that's the same and both insert at the same time, um, you may end up overwriting one poem with another one with exactly the same ID. Um, I don't think I'm going to care about that. Uh, maybe I should. Okay, and that's it for today. So um, we've made um, a very basic uh, REST API that has a uh, pretend database behind it, which we hope to be able to swap in for a real database. Uh, you can get uh, stuff out. Uh, you can add things, you can replace things, you can modify things, you can delete things. Um, if you go and look at uh, the blog post which is linked in the, the notes under this video, um, 
you you should find a link to the GitHub project where the code is, so you can look at it in more detail. And next time we'll add a bit of functionality. I'm not sure what yet. Maybe paging, maybe querying when we're listing. Um, uh, what I'm eventually interested in getting to is how the, how you do security on this stuff, um, so that you can only give people access to stuff they should have access to. Um, but I haven't learned how to do that yet, so I can't do it yet. Uh, see you soon.